Hey, aloha everyone. I'm Eric, KH6WI, and together we're going to build a full duplex FM satellite rig. The radio I have for this kit is the ICOM 2730. This is the older version. It's not the new one with the black screen, but I'm not going to buy the new one just to have the new screen. On here I've got some 3D printed rails. I found these on, I believe it was Thingiverse. They were a little thin, so I just dropped them into Tinkercad, made them a little thicker for my liking, and then printed them in PETG. I like these because it covers up all the knobs, and then on the back, it covers the SO239 port and the audio ports. So that way, it, they don't get bumped and you break something off. Okay. Along with the radio, you've got the mic. I removed the stock mic cable and just used this shielded Cat 6. It's a little bit longer, which is uh, nice, and it's also a little thinner. And I just like it a little better. To go along with the radio, I have a bag with a RT Systems programming cable. I have the original mic cable in here, and then I have the cables for my digi rig. This goes in another accessory bag that goes along with the radio, but those are the accessories that I have with it. So let's move on to the bag. I have this green bag by Raptum Tactical Gear. The model number is T433. So this is six inches by 10 inches and I don't know, maybe three inches wide. And then on the inside, it has a extra little compartment inside here, which is helpful. All right, so on this, I also attached this bag. This is from the same company. The model number is T437. This one is six inches by six inches. This is where I put the accessories in and I put the mic cable and my headphones when I am traveling or just in storage. So you can leave this unattached if you want to keep them separate because you don't need to be carrying around a digi rig while you're working an FM satellite. But what I do is I just take that bag out, the, uh, the plastic bag. So how I normally keep this is I will put the molly straps through the PALS webbing and you can just run these straight down like this and attach them. And that will give you, you know, easy on, easy off. If you want to take this off when you're going to work a pass or a couple passes, just leave this in the car. But I leave this on all the time, so I want a nice tight fit. Okay, so with them through every other one, you got a really nice solid connection there. And then uh, when I'm not actually using the rig, this will go in here. I'll put the microphone in here. And then even like the, uh, the lithium battery charger will go inside of here. So it's a nice one compact kit. From here, um, I have this. It's got my call sign patch on here. What this is, um, if, you're, if you've ever seen something called ATAC, if you've ever seen the people with like a plate carrier on and they've got a little thing here on their chest and they flip it down and there's a phone. Well, this is one of those. I went through and looked at a couple of different options. I saw some online that were made of plastic. I bought one and I have a big phone. It's a Pixel 8 Pro. It couldn't hold the phone up. It just kept sagging down. So I went with this one and I really like it. Now it's going to go on the front of the bag here as well. Okay. 
That's not going anywhere. Had to say that. Okay, so we have that. And then I have some straps. Okay, so now you can look super cool with a chest rig. Probably should have unclipped it. Um, but it sits just like that. Got the flip down phone holder and then your radio. It's going to be right here like this. That way you can see the frequency on it and make your uh, Doppler adjustments. All right. So, but before we go out and make contacts, we need to finish building the kit. So I don't want my coax to be coming directly out of the radio and going down because it's going to sit on the bottom of the bag and I don't want it to get kinked. So I have a SO239 to BNC. You can use SO239 to SO239. I'm using this one because what I'm going to plug into it is BNC. So that's in there really nice and tight. And then I have this jumper that I used for a different project. It's got a right angle BNC on this side and a right angle end connector on this side. It's about two feet long. I used it for a different project, but it happened to work out really good for this one. So it got repurposed. Now, I have the right angle and it sits below the plastic rails and it brings the cable up and out of the bag with about a foot and a half worth of room. And what that's going to go to is the MFJ 916 duplexer. I use this and I like it. You can get the aero antenna with a built-in duplexer that'll handle up to 10 watts. And that's fine for this because I only operate this at five watts. And in fact, I have the duplexer version um, and that's what I use when I use the D72. But that duplexer costs, I think $60. So I had an option to buy this for 50 or another duplexer for the arrow for 60. And this will actually hold or handle up to, I think, 300 watts, which I'm never going to hold an arrow antenna in my hand and do 300 watts. That'd be ridiculous. What this does do is it gives me, um, you know, a little bit of headroom because let's say I'm doing something other than working satellites with this radio or I bump the button. You know, if I'm, let's say I'm, you know, trying to get into a repeater that's 40 miles away with an antenna on my car and I push this up to the 15 or the 50 watt setting and then I forget to change that. If I hook that up to uh, the duplexer with the arrow that only handles 10 watts, I'm going to smoke it and then it's done. But this, if I accidentally push 15 watts or uh, 50 watts through it, it's not going to hurt it. So then what I'll do is, since it's N, uh, put that right there. And this is Hyperflex 5. You don't have to worry about um, that much loss when you're dealing with such short cable runs as this rig. Even on the 70 centimeter side, you'll see in the end, I only have five feet worth of coax for 70 centimeters. So you can use RG58. You're going to lose maybe half a dB, maybe one dB total with the adapters. So, and then what I do is I have this, this is made by one Tigris or one Tigris. It's a radio pouch. 
Um, it has the Molly straps on the back. And then you can open this up and you can put the duplexer in here, close it up. And then you can either strap this to your pack or what I actually do is I put it right here on the side with the, uh, the harness. And I'll show you that in a minute why I like that. So one, one other thing that um, I have to do with this is these are N and I use BNC for the antenna. So I have an N to BNC adapter. I put colors on these, uh, colored electrical tape. So that way, for some reason, I'm forgetful and I don't remember which one is which. The red is my two meter and the blue is my 70 centimeters. And it doesn't matter what colors you pick as long as you keep them consistent. So then the coax, this is Hyperflex 5 from M&P. Like I said, you don't need to have Hyperflex 5. You don't, you don't need a LMR 240 because this is only three feet long. So the loss is minimal. But the reason why I use Messi and Poloni coax um, is more about the connectors for this project because you know this this is a, a rig that I'm going to use while traveling. I want to make sure that I don't break the connector off. And these are pretty pretty beefy connectors. Uh, I put the blue on here, so the blue goes on here. The blue one, um, the 70 centimeters, is three feet long. And then this one is for two meters. It's the same coax, but it's four feet long. And that's just because on the antenna, the 70 centimeters, uh, which is also, I have blue tape here, is here. And then the two meters is here. And that's about a foot. So this way, if I have one extra foot on here and I hold the antenna out, um, the coax is nice and good. And one's not crazy long and one's not crazy short for audio. The audio that comes out of here, you want to use the inside port. There's two ports. Um, you want to use the inside one. And I use this mono to stereo adapter. Otherwise, you're only going to get audio in one ear. So I plug that in here. And then I have an audio splitter. I'm just going to run that through here. And then on the side, I have a little bit of Velcro. And that way I can... Make sure it doesn't go anywhere. And the reason why I have two audio connectors is um, one of them is going to go into my headphones. These are just cheap Apple wired headphones. I think they're like $15. I had them, so they work. So one of them goes into there and then I put the other one either into a DJI mic. So I have one mic that I'm using to record this video and then another mic for the radio audio. And the reason why I do that is this way you have dedicated audio coming straight out of the radio. So you can hear everything that I hear in my ears. You'll be able to hear the other station and you'll be able to hear the my audio coming back from the satellite. But if I just use that one, you won't hear if I'm you know, saying something that, you know, that I'm not transmitting. So I'll have the second mic just sitting on the bag and that way I can talk to the camera without having to talk into the satellite. So how I do that is I have this cable. The audio that needs to go into the DJI camera needs to be mic level. It comes out of the radio as line level. So this is a line to mic level reducer. Um, so one goes in like this. And this one like this. What I'll end up doing is I can either clip this onto the front of the bag or what I most often do is just toss it into the uh, inside the bag, the little accessory bag. And if I'm not filming a video for YouTube, I still record the passes. 
I just use this cheap Sony recorder. So I'll put that in there and then you don't actually need the line level reducer to use one of these. You can select whether the input is line or mic. But because I need the DJI mic for filming, I'll just make sure that it's mic level audio. And this does a good enough job. If you don't want to run the splitter, you can um, have headphones out and that way you can um, you know, monitor directly. But I find the sound that comes out of here when you're doing it in line just sounds a little different to me and I prefer the audio coming straight out of the radio. I leave my power cables nice and long. And for the battery on this, I use the BioNO 3 amp hour. If I'm traveling and I might not have as much time to, to recharge, I may use the, uh, the Denco 6 amp hour battery instead. So I think we're ready to put this into the bag. So what I'm going to do is just slide this in into the bag. and get everything all tangled up, of course. So everything's in the bag. This cord is coming out and then I'll take the battery and remember that pouch that sits inside of here. I'll put the battery in here. Just gives it a little more protection from, you know, anything banging around inside the bag. And then before the pass, I'll just plug this in. So now you can zip this up because it can you know, open up, uh, especially when you're wearing it. You can zip it up, but it still kind of opens up on you. So I have, here it is, this strap. So I know <laughs> the build is getting a little complicated, but it's not too bad. So now what I do is I just wrap this around like this. That way, if I bend over, I'm not relying on these zippers to hold everything in. And this is what I see um, when I'm operating a pass. So I'll have ISS detector on here. I can look down and just see where the satellite is. This way I don't need to have 17 arms or keep the phone in my pocket uh, and then lose track of the satellite, pull my phone out, recheck, or setting the phone down on something. This way I'm just completely self-supporting and good to go. So what I do here is I just run this. Through the webbing and I have it through on the bottom here just to tighten it up so this doesn't move around. And here we go. I have just a little bit extra length, about six inches extra than I can possibly, you know, extend this. So I can never, you know, it's never too far. There's not a, a position or place where I can point this where it's gonna, you know, yank on the, the cables. And uh, yeah, that's the, that's the setup. Hopefully this satellite rig build inspires you to build one of your own, or at least gives you some ideas on how to make your current build better. On the next video, I'm going to go out and put this rig on the air and show you how I use it. 7-3 and aloha.